Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Booth here. Are you ready for some more science? A deeper look into that biology and ecosystems? Today, we are going to be moving on from the interaction of animals and plants and the transfer of energy and begin to think about how ecosystems change. And then eventually, what are the causes of the changes to the ecosystems? So, to get ourselves warmed up, I just would like you to start by looking at this picture. Is this an ecosystem? What is it that makes you think that it is or isn't an ecosystem? Remember that an ecosystem is the community of plants, animals, habitats and microorganisms. What in this picture might remind you of these things? Well, the first thing I noticed was that cheeky monkey who is definitely drinking a human's carton of possibly milk that might be there. This made me think this is a strange picture because I always think that monkeys should belong in jungles. Yet this one looks quite at home in a city picture. Remember, we need to also think about plants. Now, grass and other plants often will grow between paving stones. I know that I have had to do a lot of weeding on my drive lately as they've grown through the cracks. So there will be some small leaves and some small bits of grass around on those streets. We might not be able to see them. And definitely bacteria on those railings and things where the air has met and where other people have touched. So there's definitely microorganisms, those tiny, tiny living things or microorganisms living that we can't see on some of those surfaces. There are habitats such as the houses and homes, but also the cracks and the holes in the ground where other animals or insects might live. But it's the monkey that seems to fit, not fit in this picture. Animals also include us. We are mammals, we are humans, and we are part of the animal kingdom. So this is an ecosystem, and although we might not think of it in that way, it is a collection, a community, a group of plants, could be your plants that are on your windowsill or in your garden, or just plants that are growing between the cracks in paved stones. Animals, us, and in this case, the monkey, habitats, all those houses, all those stones, all those places are things where animals live, places that animals live, and microorganisms, all those bacteria and algae hidden away that we can't see. It's important that we remember that ecosystems aren't just rainforests, that's a very large ecosystem, or ponds, but they're all around anywhere where these four things are together and they work in unity. Today, you are going to need a pencil or pen, a ruler and a piece of paper or your workbook if you've been asked to work in it. Remember, you can pause the video now if you need to go and get any of these things. Great, let's get started. Today's key vocabulary that we will be using is change. Predict. I hope you remember what predicting is. It's a science skill that scientists need to use when they're thinking about parts of their research that they're not sure of. They have a guess, a scientific guess that is backed up with all the knowledge they already know. And I'm going to be asking you to do some prediction based on what you have learned about ecosystems so far in this unit. Impact. That might be something you've heard before if you've been doing impacts in geography. Impacts, often we talk about impacts and they go hand in hand with change, how things have changed. Natural and human. Change, predict, impact, natural and human. And we'll be using these today in our lesson. So we're beginning with that food chain again, that transfer of energy from our producer to our primary consumer, to our secondary consumer, and to our tertiary third consumer. But what if something happened to our leaf, to our producer, and it wasn't there anymore? What do you think would happen? You're right. There would be no energy, only energy going to that ant. The energy transfer would be stopped. The leafcutter ant would not be able to eat the leaf that didn't exist 
and suddenly it would have no source of energy and we've stopped that energy transfer. So without food, is the ant able to survive? You're right, it can't survive and we would start to see the leaf cutter ant die out. Now, once the leaf cutter ant has died out, that's going to impact our armadillo. Its food source, its energy source has also started to go and we will start to see less of the armadillo in our ecosystem. When there is less of the armadillo, what do you think is going to happen to our cougar, to our tertiary consumer? You are totally correct. We will start to see the cougar die out. And this is some of the impacts that we have from changes that happen in our ecosystem. If a producer is wiped out for any reason, that can mean that the next level of our food chain then gets impacted. It's losing its energy and our ecosystem changes forever. Let's remind ourselves about a food web. A food chain is the linear, the line of one producer to one animal. And our food web is a much more complex diagram showing how different animals interact. I've taken a different part of the rainforest for this food web. See if you can work it out. Aquatic plants. Aquatic, have you heard that word before? Absolutely. It is talking about plants that grow inside of water. Aqua, water. Aquatic plants. These plants still use sunlight to make their own energy. So that makes them a producer. Brilliant. So our aquatic plant is our producer. It creates its own energy through photosynthesis using sunlight to support it. Now we have two consumers here, two consumers here that eat the aquatic plants, the tambaqui and the capybara. One is an animal whose habitat is the river and one is an animal whose habitat, the place it lives, is the river bank and the rainforest floor. They both eat the same plant. So the energy from these aquatic plants will move from the plant to our primary, our first, our primary consumer. Now, a giant otter, which can be found on the riverbank, and a piranha, which I'm sure you've heard of before, but if not, that killer fish that can eat anything in the water, will eat our piranha, will eat our capybara, and our giant otter eats our tambaqui. A tambaqui is a pretty big, Fish, but it is a herbivore. Piranhas are also known to eat giant otters, so sometimes it might be that the energy transfer goes from the piranha to the giant otter. They are our secondary consumers. Our producer is our aquatic plant, Tambaqui and Capybara are our primary consumers, and our giant otter and our piranha are our secondary consumers. Now, at the top, at the apex of our food web, we have got that black caiman we were talking about, one of the most dangerous animals in the rainforest. And that is our tertiary, our third consumer. Our tertiary consumer is the one that will eat almost anything in front of it. It is a carnivore. And sometimes it won't just eat piranha or giant otter, it'll go straight to the rodents, straight to the capybara. It's not necessarily going to always eat a tambaqui, but it has been known to eat fish as well. So this is a carnivore and it is at the apex, the very top of our food web. It has very few predators. So I'm going to be asking you to make a prediction to explain what you think would happen to our food web we've just talked about if there were no more aquatic plants or aquatic grasses. If that aquatic grass disappeared, was left the river, what would happen to our ecosystem then? So you are going to write a prediction. Remember a prediction is a scientific guess. Knowing how ecosystems work and all the learning we have talked about energy transfer, what do you think would happen? I predict that if there were no more aquatic grasses, hmm, 
because hmm, I predict that if there are no more aquatic grasses, hmm, because hmm, it would also impact hmm, because. Now, I have gonna have put some scientific language on the board for you to use when you pause this in just a moment to write this in your book. So you could use species, producer, consumer, impact, ecosystem, energy transfer, and survive. And all of these words are at the bottom here so you can spell them correctly if you look very carefully. So in a moment, you will pause this and you are going to fill in your own prediction using all of the science we have learned so far to support your idea. So press pause now. How did you get on? Have you used some of the science language in your prediction? Have a quick look. Perhaps you could underline them in your sentence. Great. I had a prediction myself. So I predict that if there were no more aquatic grasses, species such as the tambaqui and capybara would not survive because they would be unable to consume their source of energy. How does that compare to yours? Did you also predict that you think that the, pr the primary consumers would not be able to survive? They would have no energy? Brilliant, well done. It would also impact species like the giant otter, piranha and black caiman because they would be unable to get their energy from the primary consumers. So we're talking about the fact that without any plants, the whole food web and the ecosystem itself starts to fall apart and we start to see some of our species decline and die. And this is some of the real issues that we are facing in the world today. Okay, the next part of this lesson, you are going to be working alongside me. So you are going to need your pen with you and your paper or your book ready. And we will go through how we set up the page and then you'll be making notes alongside. Now we know that if something changes in our ecosystem, it can impact a lot of other animals and areas around it. We want to start to look at what causes changes in our ecosystem. Have a look at the picture just here, just below. This is the same area of forest on a one year and then a few years later. What do you think's happened? Some people might guess there's been a fire, but actually what's happened here, and you can see by the grids that have been cut into the ground and the river, the water that's around them, these, this forest, and these trees have been cut down. They have been part of what we call deforestation, the cutting down of trees, and often it's by humans so that they can farm or use the trees in another way. Sometimes we use them for our own energy. But is this the only way an ecosystem can change? By cutting down the plants in its area, or are there other ways that Cause things that cause change to an ecosystem. Right, have you got those pens and that paper ready? Brilliant. So I'd like you to get your paper or your book and just turn it landscape. That's portrait. I would like you to turn your page landscape. And right in the middle of your page, I would like you to write the word ecosystem. Carefully look at the screen. Ecosystem that collection a community of animals, plants, habitats, and microorganisms. Our key word for our learning over the last few lessons in science, ecosystem. And when you've written ecosystem in the middle of your page, you can split your page in two. It might be a little bit up back to front, but you can see how my page has been set up. Ecosystem in the middle, and a nice straight line with a ruler, to split the page in half. Once you have split your page in half, you need to put a title on one side of natural. So you can see all of my information about natural will go in this box here. Leave the other side for now. 
if these instructions have been a little bit fast and you're not quite there with your rulers and your line, don't panic. Press pause now and you can get going with your setup of your page. If you're ready and you're with me, we're going to start talking about natural changes. Not all changes that happen in the ecosystem occur because of humans. A lot of them do, but not all of them happen. And natural are things that happen because we are living on Earth. One of the biggest and most common kinds of changes that we find because we live on Earth is this, the weather. How often do we talk about the weather? How often does it stop our football? Does it stop being able to go outside? Sometimes we can't go and do the things that we like because it's raining too much or because there's too much snow or it's icy. Or even in the summer, it just gets too hot. Weather really does impact all of us, all of our day to life and it also day to day life and it also impacts the ecosystem. Now, when we talk about weather, we're talking about the weather in an area at one time whether it's raining, whether it's sunny, whether there are clouds, whether it's foggy, all of these are examples of weather. But what changes ecosystems are more extreme weather. Can you think of an extreme weather? Perhaps there's been some extreme weather near you recently. Or maybe in the news. Have a think, an extreme weather. Did you think of a hurricane? Hurricanes are huge storms that come across our oceans and land and remember our oceans are also ecosystem and ecosystems and they land in different parts of the world lots and lots of wind comes with a hurricane and what do you think that does to some of our ecosystems plants get damaged it can cause the death of animals including humans is a very dangerous weather. It doesn't happen all the time, but there are seasons where hurricanes do occur. And that is one of the biggest natural changes to our ecosystem. Drought is another weather that can cause changes to the ecosystem. Drought is when it is very, very, very hot and there is no rain. And so plants, particularly, and animals are unable to live easily and that can change the ecosystem of a place it's not always a permanent change sometimes ecosystems come back when the weather comes back to normal but it will change ecosystems so we've got hurricanes with the wind and the storm and we've got drought extreme heat and very 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 little water then we've got the opposite Flooding, when there is too much rain or too much water, sometimes that flooding happens because snow has melted in mountains and it has come through the rivers. That, of course, can cause huge impact and change to ecosystems. Whether it's our ecosystems and where we live in the towns that we live in, or the fields, or the rivers themselves, huge changes happen because of rain. Now, you can write in your section of natural how weather can change an ecosystem. Now, if you want, you could be taking notes alongside or you can pause it at the end of each one and add to your notes. But you, by the end of this, will have a huge lot of information about how natural occurrence can change the ecosystem. Pause if you want to just look at those pictures a little bit more and write or make notes in more detail. The next natural change to ecosystems, we are going to look at the Earth's movements. Some of you might have heard about the Earth's plates already if you've done any studying of volcanoes or earthquakes and know about the plates that our Earth is made, made from. But if you're not sure, we'll go, you'll be going into detail later on in another unit of learning, probably in your geography. But our Earth is split into different plates and those plates are continuously moving, sometimes next to each other, sometimes over each other. And that movement causes huge changes to ecosystems. The first one 
is this. What's this? Can you see? It's a volcano. A volcano erupts and the lava is spewed out and that changes whole ecosystems because that hot lava makes things look different. It kills plants and animals. It is highly destructive. So volcanoes are a natural formation on our earth and that is one way our ecosystems can change. Alongside our volcanoes we have earthquakes. You can see here this road which has been ripped and buckled because of an earthquake that had occurred near it. Again this is a huge change that is a natural nothing to do with humans. It's not a human's fault that an earthquake occurs. It is just what takes place on our earth. It's part of the way our earth our planet works. Another impact because of the Earth's movements and the plates that move that we live on is a tsunami or a tidal wave. Huge waves that come after small earthquakes that happen in the ocean and they can wipe out huge ecosystems across any coast that they happen in. So we have weather that you should have written about, our natural occurrence of change to ecosystem. There's the Earth's movements and our final is bacteria or disease. When disease spreads, it can kill off plants as well as animals and that can cause changes to habitats and can also impact the microorganisms that are living in an area too. So bacteria or disease, although it's something that occurs naturally all around us, can also be a source of change in the ecosystem. So, pause this now if you haven't got all of your notes about our natural changes. Our next section that we're going to talk about are human changes. So on your sheet you should have natural all filled in with all of your notes and if not you can pause or rewind to remind yourself about what each natural change would be and now we're going to move on to human i am sure because we've already mentioned it but i am sure that you have all heard about deforestation it's one of the biggest changes to ecosystems especially in forests and in the rainforest in particular and that is where we as humans choose to cut down trees and use them for our own use but not necessarily to support those ecosystems. Now if we think about the rainforest and if the trees are all cut down what's that going to do to the animals? We've taken away some of the habitats that, that animals live in. They have no home so they're no longer safe and are no longer able to survive. We've also taken away a lot of food from some of the animals by taking away trees. So deforestation without any thought of the ecosystem around it is a really, really dangerous change to ecosystems. Deforestation is the first human change and the impact it has. The next human change to ecosystem is farming. As animals, we are very intelligent people. We have learned to grow the food that we need so that we can consume our energy. We don't need to go find our primary consumer or go find a producer. We just pop to the shops and we can choose any of the food that we would like to eat to give us energy and we enjoy that food. We don't just eat to survive, we eat to enjoy. And that means that we need to grow it and we grow it on farms. And those farms change their natural ecosystem around them. So they do cause change in ecosystems. It's not natural that you would have rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of banana trees or cocoa plants. This is something we have chosen to change in an ecosystem to help us as human beings but not always thinking about the other animals or wildlife or plants and organisms that live in that ecosystem. Another human change is building. As our population, the number of people that live in a place grows, we need more places for those people to stay in, more homes for them to feel safe. And so we 
build and build on more of our environment and that changes the ecosystem. Now we've seen at the beginning of today's lesson that actually animals can adapt and can change so that they su survive in our new ecosystems. That isn't always the case for all plants and animals and organisms that live in the ecosystems that are there to start with. And the final very important human change that we need to think about as humans is global warming. How does the pollution that we create through our cars, through the things we eat, through the things we grow, through the way we live our lives, how does that impact and change ecosystems across the world? And global warming is talking about the fact that the ice caps may, are melting and that we are getting warmer as a whole planet and the impact that that warmth has on all of our ecosystems. So you should have written lots of notes and I know that that has gone quite quickly so you may want to pause or rewind and rewatch bits so that you can get your page all together and understand that we have got some things that are natural that change ecosystems and some things that are human that change in ecosystems ecosystems. Now a lot of those changes we've been talking have actually been quite negative. We've been talking about how they kill plants or stop animals being able to get the food and the energy that they need. But is all change to ecosystems a bad thing? Is every ecosystem change negative? I'd like to have a look at the, this picture here and think carefully about what it's shown. This is the first one, 2008, and it's showing a river all the way to 2011. What do you notice? So in 2008, the first picture that was drawn, we see a river and there are some shrubs. It doesn't look particularly well cared for. It isn't very green. So perhaps there's, it's, some of the plants have been cut back. It doesn't look to be particularly alive. And then as we go through 2009, we can see that there is more water in the river. So perhaps the weather's changed. There is more green along the sides. It looks like there's been new plants planted in the riverbed. And as we get from 2010 to through 2011, we can see this lush green plants overgrowing. And I can just imagine all of the insects and butterflies that would be living in this new habitat that has formed. So it's important to remember that even though a lot of changes that we were talking about can have a negative, a bad impact on ecosystems, we are able to create and to support new ecosystems forming by the choices that we make. Not every human impact has to be a negative one. And perhaps you could go away and have a think about how you could have a positive impact making your own micro ecosystem somewhere. Maybe you could plant a few more plants. Maybe you could create some kind of bug hotel so that you are thinking about how you are giving back to our amazing earth and supporting a new ecosystem to grow. So, we've been thinking about change and how change impacts a whole ecosystem. If one thing changes in a huge way, everything else is impacted by that change. If a producer is taken away, a plant or a tree, then that means that there is no energy for animals to consume. And that means that that can change an ecosystem forever. You have been predicting, using that scientific skill of using all of your knowledge to help guess what you think would happen should a change occur in an ecosystem. We've talked about impact and how changes impact different places and different animals and different plants. We talked about natural things that happen because we live on earth and human things that happen because we as human choose to do it. In our next lesson we are going to look closely at changes that happen in our rainforest and actually one that perhaps we really need to think about which is deforestation. What is deforestation and what is the real impact in rainforests today? Looking forward to going through that one with you. Have a great day, see you next time, bye!